Okay, so uh, the the first recording didn't crash. It's amazing. These other recordings may accidentally be longer than 17 minutes because now we're just getting into podcast night with the boys or something. I don't, I don't know. I actually have a view count, which is amazing. We take those. We take those. We're just going to enjoy enjoy it for what it is. We're going to enjoy things for what they are. Let's uh let's get back to the game. I could head directly south to go to like the key point they want me to go to. There's a point in life there, yeah. But why not explore some more first? We might find some more permagrowth items and that's uh or we might just kill a bunch of things and get to the next score mark, which will lengthen our health gauge again. Oh, he well, says going are already broken. Yep. I would love to get, like, a 3D model of these kinds of boxing and use them for tabletop simulator. Well, do we even know what they look like in 3D? They're sprites. Nope. Which is the fun part, because that means that we can take some artistic license. What is in here? Grenades! Yeah, lebron has got the right of it. They're cones. They look conic. More like grenades, but like... <laughs> We all just said that at the same time. It's great. I was gonna say, for whatever reason, they remind me of certain blocks from Mario 3. Oh, look, it's it's Super Metroid enemies. I mean, what is Guardian Legend if not just Metroid, but from top down? Oh. That is a boss Ryu, spawning Ryu. in. The armadillo. Way too many not. pixels. Yeah, that's a lot of pixels. I think this is from uh, Contra 3. It looks Contra. So I do. What console was Contra 3 on? SNES. Oh, hey, it's a red. It's the Red Boy. Well, go buy that thing for 100 chips. Yep. So now, now that I have more than 50 chips, notice that my regular gun is more powerful. The second I fall below 100 chips, it goes back to the basic pea shooter. boxing just to the left yeah but they're not oh, the type that yeah they're not the type that have anything in them if it's a brown boxing it's just empty oh oh it's our blue boy max you found a heart container! I mean... Da, na, na, na. A HP memory! Yeah, let's go with that. Actually, I guess in Mario's case, it would be like a firmware update. Well, it added more health. You need to... I assume you just downloaded thing. more RAM. Downloaded RAM, it's fine. Yeah, sure, why not? Oh, it's Hard Man's theme from Mega Man 3. <laughs> He's a hard, hard man. man. Who the hell named him Hard Man? I assume Especially considering he's one of the easiest away. bosses in Mega Man history. And he's just hard. He's got spinal problems. Bro, 
Bro just has a hard life. That's what he means by hard. He's got shit, you know? I mean, to be fair, Wily's naming convention was never great to be in with. Wait, I thought, I thought it was Dr. White who uh, named them. In Mega Man 1, yes. After that, because they were... They were Dr. Light's robots in one, getting reprogrammed. And then beyond that, it was, uh, it was... Actually, in 2 it was Dr. Wily, in 3 it was Dr. Wily, in 4 it was Dr. Cossack. In 5 it was Wily again, although they fr he framed Proto Man for it. In 6 it was actually 8... Robot, robotics experts who were sending their robots into a fighting tournament that got reprogrammed. Oh yeah, because that'll go well. You know, you said the fighting tournament, and I just had to remember Mega Man actually had a fighting game. It did? Mega Man yeah. the Power Battlers. Was it good? There were two of them. It was. They it were was, fun as it fuck. Was solid. They also had a soccer game that was really hit solid. Didn't Mega Man have a crossover with, like, Street Fighter or some other fighting game? Yes, Mega um, Man Cross Street Fighter. I mean, given that Street Fighter and Mega Man are both Capcom, I guarantee you they have both appeared in the other. Yeah, but... It, Cap yeah, but Capcom the fun... Capcom crossovering with itself, uh, challenge level impossible. Like... Yep. Didn't, Meg didn't, like, the, the Mega Man that was on the cover of Mega Man 1 appear in a fighting game? Yes. No, it, it was... It's Mega a Marlboro! Oh, oh, oh. Joji, watch out! This is how you I... get you! Well, uh, Miria needs to watch out. Also, you're saying, are you saying it's a bad thing? What happened to me? Like, no. damn. But, like, if it happens again, you might stop being pro. But, yeah, it was Mega Man 2. Bad box art Mega Man 2. Uh, oh, bad the box Mega art Mega Man, Mega Man 1 was in. Well, uh, no, Mega Man's had terrible box art because of, like, the West thought it needed it. Yeah. It's like, it's gotta look like a hyper, it's gotta look like an actual dude doing these things, and not, like, the little Japanese characters that we had before. You know what, like, they were kinda right, but, like, it, it could've been a lot less shit. It could've been... But like, Mega Man on the Mega Man 1 box art did not look like a happy guy. He did not look like a guy I wanted to play as. Yeah. And with... The one thing that was pointed out to me when it came up with the whole box art and, like, promotional material we got from West... There's no... There was no internet at the time, so we had to rely on building hype for something that was very limited in graphics. I want to say Kirby was like. I got the old block key. Actually, Kirby was one of the few ones that actually came accurate to the West. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but was it the whole point of the NES black box design was to stop that because it was a huge problem during the Atari days? Possibly. Okay, so fun fact: this victory theme isn't from the Guardian Legend. I can tell you what it is. I think, if I'm right. Go for it, Koji. Star Tropics. Nope. It sounds Star Tropics. It does. However, this is actually from Gardic Gaiden, the game, or, uh, Gardic, the game before the Guardian Legend that became oh, man. this game. Oh, man, Gardic phone. <laughs> Jason, I was oh, man, expecting you to either do a big tree. sigh and just slowly disconnect me from the call. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was actually funny. But yeah, um, because this the actual version from the NES one is faster and a little higher pitched and a little more energetic. Man, I had to mention Star Tropics, now I want to go play it again. Star Tropics is one of my, like, major, like... NES favorites. Same with two. Didn't it come out towards the end of the NES lifespan? Uh, Fun fact, Star Tropics 2 was the last game to come out for the NES. Yeah, Star Tropics 2 definitely was. Ah, so during the SNES. Also, Star Tropics had probably the most interesting anti-piracy. 
Wait, did it come out after piracy. Wario Woods? Yes. Wow. Uh, technically, sort of was, <laughs> but it's very weak anti-piracy. Because it was a single static code, it wasn't anti-piracy. It was just a feeling. It was, but here's the thing. You also have to deal with the fact that there wasn't a lot of technology share. There wasn't a lot of ways to share this info, so you needed to buy the game to have the manual, to dip that page in water, to be able to see the code. Like, yes, you could share it with friends, but it's not like someone could literally pirate the game and know the code. Yeah, you didn't really need anti cars for the NES anyway, because, like, it just was not feasible to pirate a card. Not, not until disk systems came out during this nest. You are wrong. It is. It was always feasible for piracy because it was not just English that was pirating. It was other countries, like countries where NES was banned, for example, resorted to a lot of piracy. Yeah, actually, People, amusingly not... enough, Australia and a lot of Europe did a shit ton of piracy. Yeah, and it's because it wasn't available readily to them, so they, that was their only option to be able to play these games. Also, and can we talk is... about the fact that this game is using Castlevania music? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but weren't PAL versions of NES games objectively worse? Yes. Because uh, of, like, the hurts? Yes. yes. I'm not sure if it was the hurts. I just remember there is, was a major issue with PAL games in general. That a lot of the censorship in PAL games was also ridiculously strict like nobody in the like the only way they were allowed to have contra was renaming it pro protector and making it so that the main characters were robots instead of humans because they didn't want humans obviously audibly dying that way okay i say i say like starbound had fun anti-piracy and then i'm reminded of earth Talk about, uh, holy fuck. Anyway, the, the other game that I was just talking about, Star Tropics, there we go, it had Star in the name, it was close. Earthbound had the most trolly anti-piracy in existence. <laughs> was yeah. it? Yeah, it did. Didn't Spyro 1 have some pretty funny anti-piracy measures? Yeah, it, it like, would just randomly Spyro... take eggs away from you. Uh, it also just wouldn't let you save, but there have been, of course, speedruns of people doing the pirated Spyro because it's feasible. Uh, Earthbound was yeah, but the don't entire you, game. Don't you get booted to title and everything reset if you once you beat the first phase of the final boss? Uh, wait. As a, wait with, with Earthbound, it was effectively not that. What it was was the entire game effectively played normally. Uh, your monster encounter rate was through the roof. Yeah, so a lot more enemies would spawn, and in, and in places they wouldn't normally. Mm -hmm. And then when you actually did get to the final fight, it soft locked it wiped your game. saves. It soft locked. It Here. wiped your saves and then went into an infinite. Mana. Game. Mana. I was like, man, I'm trying to like finish it because yes, it does wipe your saves, but it soft locks you to force you to reboot, and that reboot is where it shows you your saves are gone. And a lot of people were complaining that it was a bug, and then people were just like, actually, that's the anti-piracy measure. Thank you for admitting you're fired. <laughs> kind of like how Skullgirls did one, too. Oh, you have violated the law. Skullgirls did one that was just like one of the loading screen tips. Was like, I can't remember it, but it was some random nonsense that people went onto Twitter at the time and were like, hey, what does this mean? Like, what's up with this loading screen? And the developer responded, that means you pirated the game. But anti-cheats in games, some of them are really fun, and some of them are just kind of unnecessary. Top of my head, some of the really fun ones was, uh... There's... There was Game Dev Tycoon, where if you pirated it, it pretty yeah. much made it where your games would get pirated, and you would mm -hmm. lose money constantly. That is um, your would just tank. Yep. Okay, uh, so dude, this is the, uh... I'm about to I'm about to do a deep dive meme here. This is the push button receive bacon key. Yes! Oh, 
Yes, I remember that meme. I love it. Man, I thought Fifth Element first thing. I don't know. Come back with your multi pass. Oh, yeah, my favorite part play. about the Fifth Had Element. My favorite part You're about like, the Fifth okay. Element movie was in the early parts of the movie. There's the freaking the freaking drug dealer dude, the druggy dude. Who tries to rob Do Corbin Dallas? And at one point, Bruce oh, Willis an like. At one point, Bruce Willis struggles to not laugh. He like lets out the tiniest little chuckle, and you see the corner of his lips curl up into a smile, and he's like, "That's a very nice hat." And th it, he wasn't supposed to laugh like that, but it was just so funny that they kept it. So what was the entire heresy you were going on with mana? Just shapes and beats, where when you close the games, it would be all like, Hey, you pirated the game! And that's okay, because I also pirated games. Yeah. Like, I, I like when also devs understand it's like, not all piracy is malicious. Um, like, Witcher 2 anti-piracy was, uh, you, the full game fully playable, it's fine. But, uh, if during your, uh, sex scenes, it would just be a random old woman NPC in set. <laughs> and oh, then, that was uh, a very worth in Witcher boss. three. In Witcher three, I believe they have zero anti-piracy because they came out and said we won't put it in there because the community is the best anti-piracy we could have asked. For. Yeah, they're right. Because it was literally people were like, "Hey, how do I pirate the game?" And people were just being like, "You don't go buy it. Stop asking." But I don't want to give them money. Go give them money. I, I'm not even ashamed to admit, I pirated Witcher 3, because I didn't have the money. I have since bought it seven times. Wow! Uh, mostly seven. because I- Seven. I bought it for myself, on GOG. I think I bought it for minutes, myself- by the way. Okay, I think I bought it for myself on- Oh Steam. yeah. And then I gifted it to a bunch of people. So it was one of those that had it on their wish list, and I'm like, yeah. I'd rather people actually, you know, have this. Well, we're gonna we're gonna end this episode. We found a defense tablet. We found a tablet with a green lander alien. I've never seen a green boy before. And we're gonna stop this recording and see if it breaks stream. Woo!